The rain gurgled off the roofs of the palace. The gargoyles had taken up their stations at every corner, straining gnats and flies via their ears. Corporal Carrot shook the drops of his leather rain cape and exchanged salutes with a troll on guard. He strolled through the clerks in the outer rooms and knocked respectfully on the door of the oblong office. Come. Carrot entered, marched to the desk, saluted, and stood at ease. Lord Veterinari tensed, very slightly. Oh, yes, he said. Corporal Carrot, I was expecting something like this. I'm sure you've come to ask me for something? Carrot unfolded a piece of grubby paper and cleared his throat. Well, sir, we could do with a new dartboard, you know, for when we're off duty. The patrician blinked. It was not often that he blinked. I beg your pardon? A new dartboard, sir. It helps the men relax after their shifts, sir. Vetinari recovered a little. Another one? But you had one only last year. It's the librarian, sir. Nobby lets him play and he just leans a bit and hammers the dart in with his fist. It ruins the board. Anyway, detritus threw one through it. Yeah, through the wall behind it, too. Very well. And? Well... Acting Constable Detritus needs to be let off having to pay for five holes in his breastplate. Granted, tell him not to do it again. Yes, sir. Well, I think that's about it. Yeah, except for a new kettle. The patrician's hand moved in front of his lips. He was trying not to smile. Dear me, another kettle as well. What happened to the old one? Oh, we still use it, sir. We still use it. But we're going to need another because of the new arrangements. I'm sorry? What new arrangements? Carrot unfolded a second and rather larger piece of paper. The watch to be brought up to an establishment strength of 56. The old watch houses at the Rivergate, the Deosil Gate, and the Hubbards Gate to be reopened and manned on a 24-hour basis? The patrician's smile remained, but his face seemed to pull away from it, leaving it stranded and all alone in the world. A department for, well, we haven't got a name for it yet, but looking at clues and things like dead bodies, e.g. how long they've been dead. And to start with, we'll need an alchemist and possibly a ghoul, provided they promise not to take anything home and eat it. A special unit using dogs, which could be very useful, and Lance Constable Angua can deal with that since she can, um, be her own handler a lot of the time. A request here from Corporal Nobs that watchmen be allowed all the weapons they can carry, although I'd be obliged if you said no to that. Uh, Lord Veterinari waved the hand. All right, all right, he said. I can see how this is going. And supposing I say no? There was another of those long, long pauses, wherein may be seen the possibilities of several different futures. Do you know, sir? I never even considered that you'd say no. You didn't? No, sir. I'm intrigued. Why not? It's all for the good of the city, sir. Do you know where the word policeman comes from? It means man of the city, sir. From the old word polis. Yes, I do know. The patrician looked at Carrot. He seemed to be shuffling futures in his head. Then, yes, I see to all requests except the one involving Corporal Nobbs, and you, I think, should be promoted to captain. Yes, I agree, sir. That would be a good thing for Ank Morpork, but I will not command the watch, if that's what you mean. Why not? Because I could command the watch. Because people should do things because an officer tells them. They shouldn't do it just because Corporal Carrot says so. Just because Corporal Carrot is... Good at being obeyed. Carrot's face was carefully blank. An interesting point. But there used to be a rack in the old days. Commander of the watch. I suggest Samuel Vimes. The patrician leaned back. Oh, yes, he said. Commander of the watch. Of course, that became a rather unpopular job, after all that business with Lorenzo the Kind. It was a Vimes who held the post in those days. I've never liked to ask him if he was an ancestor. He was, sir. I looked it up. Would he accept? Is the high priest an Ophlian? Does a dragon explode in the woods? The patrician steepled his fingers and looked at Carrot over the top of them. It was a mannerism that had unnerved many.
But you see, Captain, the trouble with Sam Vimes is that he upsets a lot of important people, and I think that a commander of the Watch would have to move in very exalted circles, attend guild functions. They exchanged glances. The patrician got the best of the bargain, since Carrot's face was bigger. Both of them were trying not to grin. An excellent choice, in fact, said the patrician. I take in the liberty, sir, of drafting a letter to the cap to Mr. Vimes on your behalf. Just to save you trouble, sir, perhaps you'd care to have a look? You think of everything, don't you? I hope so, sir. Lord Vetinari read the letter. He smiled once or twice. Then he picked up his pen, signed at the bottom, and handed it back. And is that the last of your dem requests? Carrot scratched his ear. There is one, actually. I need a home for a small dog. It must have a large garden, a warm spot by the fire, and happy, laughing children. Good heavens. Really? Well, I suppose we can find one. Thank you, sir. That's all, I think. The patrician stood up and limped over to the window. It was dusk. Lights were being lit all over the city. With his back to Carrot, he said, Tell me, Captain, this business about there being an heir to the throne. What do you think about it? I don't think about it, sir. That's all sword and a stone nonsense. Kings don't come out of nowhere, waving a sword and putting everything right. Everyone knows that. But there was some talk of... Evidence? No one seems to know where it is, sir. When I spoke to Captain... To Commander Vimes, he said you'd got it. Then I must have put it down somewhere. I'm sure I couldn't say where, sir. My word. I hope you absent-mindedly put it down somewhere safe. I'm sure it's well guarded, sir. I think you've learned a lot from Cap Commander Vimes, Captain. Sir, my father always said I was a quick learner, sir. Perhaps the city does need a king, though. Have you considered that? Like a fish needs a... Uh, a thing that doesn't work underwater, sir. Yet a king can appeal to the emotions of his subjects, Captain, in very much the same way as you did recently, I understand. Yes, sir. But what will he do next day? You can't treat people like puppet dolls. No, sir. Mr. Vimes always said a man has got to know his limitations. If there was a king, then the best thing he could do would be to get on with a decent day's work. Indeed. But, if there was some pressing need, then perhaps he'd think again. Carrot brightened up. It's a bit like being a god, really. When you need us, you really need us. And when you don't, well, best if we just walk around the streets and shout, All's well! Providing all is well, of course. Captain Carrot, said Lord Vetinari, because we understand one another so well, and I think we do understand one another, there is something I'd like to show you. Come this way. He led the way into the throne room, which was empty at this time of day. As he hobbled across the wide floor, he pointed ahead of him. I expect you know what that is, Captain? Oh yes, the golden throne of Ankh Morpork. And no one has sat in it for many hundreds of years. Have you ever wondered about it? Exactly what do you mean, sir? So much gold, even when the brass has been stripped off the brass bridge. Take a look behind the throne, will you? Carrot mounted the steps. Good grief! The patrician looked over his shoulder. It's just gold foil over wood. Quite so. It was hardly even wood anymore. Rot and worms had fought one another to a standstill over the last biodegradable fragment. Carrot prodded it with a sword and part of it drifted gently away in a puff of dust. What do you think about this, Captain? Carrot stood up. On the whole, sir, it's probably just as well that people don't know. So I have always thought. Well, I will not keep you. I'm sure you have a lot to organize. Carrot saluted. Thank you, sir. I gather that you and, uh, Constable Angua are getting along well? We have a very good understanding, sir. Of course, there will be minor difficulties, said Carrot. But to look on the positive side, I've got someone who's always ready for a walk around the city. As Carrot had his hand on the door handle, Lord Vetinari called out to him. Yes, sir? Carrot looked back, 
at the tall, thin man standing in the big bare room beside the golden throne filled with decay. You're a man interested in words, Captain? I just invite you to consider something your predecessor never fully grasped. Sir, have you ever wondered where the word politician comes from? said the patrician.